This is Uber Drinks. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. The rest belongs to me. <laughs> On today's episode of Watch Jericho, the people want to know why you're up so early, Gabe. Drink my coffee. I guess it makes sense. I should not be up for hours. But today, we're headed to a plane to pick up a car. Thanks, Uber. Yeah, man. Uber for John? Yeah, how's it going? Awesome, man. What is going on, guys? I am Watch Jergo, and today we start our day off, well, on a plane, but now at one of the largest car auctions in the world here in the very windy Santa Ana, California. There are cars as far as the eye can see, and somewhere in here is my cheap new McLaren. Now, apparently because it's a high value vehicle, it's up here in lot ops, which means the main building, I think. I honestly have no idea. I'm just walking because they said go this way. How's it going, Steve? Manheim, Manheim, baby! This is my first time at any of the real car auctions. And I was just walking down here looking for this car. I bought, give me the Vince McLaren, the brass blue one. Have you seen it? Yep. Okay, well, we're looking for the car. We have no idea where it is, but nice to meet us. We found it, boys. My first legit. This is actually a car that I can say is a supercar no matter what. Calling an R8 a supercar is a little bit subjective, but of course, every McLaren is absolutely a real supercar. So, this is the cheapest, 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 cheaper than a new F 150 Lariat McLaren MP412C that I have ever seen sell. Clean title. And I bought it from a very reputable company that runs hundreds of cars through here nonstop. Really good guys. And they said, if you don't like this car, you don't have to leave with it. So I'm here. I've got my Autel. I brought the big scanner because I didn't know what we were going to run into. And we're going to start by first checking the tires, which are Michelins already. Let's do this. We're going to do the whole inspection live with you guys. This is my first time seeing the car. It is wrapped blue, but the car is actually blue. If we can see, uh, yeah, there you go nice dark blue inside the door there so it's also wrapped matte blue i was worried about the wrap but it looks like the wrap is it's a california wrap if it comes from california or new york or new jersey or something like that for some reason those guys know how to wrap take a look at all the edges beautiful seam work this is a wrap i mean i owned a wrap shop so I don't even consider my skills to be anywhere near what these guys do. This wrap is absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm happy with the wrap. So far, I don't see any like major lifting areas. And I honestly really like the way it looks. It's kind of a color changing blue, so I'm happy about that. That looks sweet. We've got Michelins all the way around. Oh no, they're Sport Cup 2s. It's got race car tires, but it looks like they're in great shape. Not anywhere close to the wear bars. So we're checking all the tires today, boys. I usually wouldn't care at all. These, uh, the fronts feel like they're perfect. Brand new. Are they also Sport Cup 2s? Uh, the fronts are PS4s, even better. Uh, I'll probably try to switch the rears to PS4s if they'll fit. So far, this is all good news. They told me this car came in, a customer dropped it off, wanted out of it, not a single light on the dash, it was ready to go anywhere, and uh, I mean, I had no ID on tire condition, brakes. The brakes have some miles on them, but they feel okay. All right, the brakes have quite a bit of wear. You can see where they're blued versus the factory. I mean, my finger literally steps out, but that's just the cost of doing business right there. It looks like they work perfectly. The wear is even across the rotor. The door swipe worked perfectly, which I think is pretty tough. On the very first try as I walked up to it, it unlocked. Let's get the scanner on here now and see what kind of codes we pull, if any. I'm really hoping this car is as perfect as they say. And I'm gonna let it idle, warm up, 
and then I'm gonna get under it, check for rack leaks and check for transmission leaks, and then try to run through all the gears. At least, you know, reverse neutral drive back and forth. We've got some wear in the seats, but this leather feels amazing, I gotta say. This thing does have 60,000 miles on it. Also some wear on the wheel, but it's not crazy. It is an insanely high mileage McLaren. Climbing in. All right, here we go. Have I out hoovied hoovy, guys? That's the question here. I got this car for $76,000. It's It was so cheap. Cheaper than a C8 with any options. I mean, if you buy a C8, you're getting a 2LT. It was cheaper than that. And it seems like it runs well. 62,299 miles on it. I wish I could check the oil. Before I even bought this car, I messaged Hoovy and I said, should I buy this? And only, I'd say 45 seconds after I said sold, which means you're committed to buy this car from the place I bought it, uh, Hoovy said, do not buy this car no matter what you do. And he was just, he was just upset with me after that. <laughs> but anyway, I did buy it. So far it's looking good. We're gonna let it warm all the way up. I'm gonna steer back and forth, check the transmission like I said. It just scanned it. Apparently I can't actually pull the McLaren uh, manufacturer codes. Uh, it's not supported. That is a little bit unfortunate there, but there's nothing on the dash and there's no standard OBD codes. So we're shutting down the Autel. In a couple of hours or one hour, I'll be able to get this car out of here and take it for a drive. Hoovy told me to check the rack. It's $20,000 and it leaks commonly. Check Iris, which is the infotainment system. It's $10,000. And of course, we all know the screens fail all the time. As you can see, the screen looks wonderful. And it looks like everything kind of does what it should. And then the transmission, which is a really hard one to check. But all I can do is listen carefully. And that's, that's about as good as we're gonna get today. Having good tires and a really high quality wrap does tell me something that like the car was taken care of, at least a little bit. works suspension works everything works so far changing everything back to normal I mean so far the car seems okay I guess we really find out when I get it out on the road this car came from McLaren Dallas and it was two hundred and sixty five thousand dollars the window sticker is right there the options are exterior standard paint blue carbon fiber sill panels sport exhaust cast iron brakes instead of the uh, carbon ceramics that should be a, a D option and parking sensors, meridian sound, heated memory seats. All right, that's about all that matters. $256,975. Unbelievable. The only thing I found wrong with this thing is the coolant reservoir. That tab right there is broken off, so it lets it rock. But I think it's gonna be okay. I think it'll make it home. Everything else looks like it's pretty good. There is some wetness around the power steering fill cap there, but the fluid level's perfect. So I think we're just gonna go ahead and say that the power steering is holding at least, because it has not leaked all its fluid out. I've also checked everything I could underneath. There's not a drop on a panel. There's nothing coming out of the CVs. Uh, the oil sump looks dry-ish. I mean, it's got some dirt on it, but it's not like wet or seeping. I think this car looks okay. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is this a win or is this the end of my life? It could very possibly be the worst financial decision I've ever made. Well, that was short-lived. We just got through the gate and I saw a flashing check engine light and I scanned it and we already have cylinder seven, cylinder eight and random multiple cylinder misfires. And it is a supercar. It does have the sport exhaust, but there's this nasty rattle out of the top end. Listen to this. You guys hear that drum roll and I got back there it sounds like it's coming out of the intake it wasn't there until the car warmed up it was, I checked the oil I saw a little bit of smoke on start that's pretty supercar stuff I'm not too worried it's twin turbo v8 it's gonna smoke a little bit it smoked for about one second cleaned up and then I checked the oil and it's right at just under okay that ticking and the cylinder misfire has me scared to death 
I'll go put some gas in it. It's out of gas. And they said that's like a half mile. And if uh, if we're still worried about it, I think we have to bail on my on my dream car. I'm the more time went on, the more excited I was to drive this thing home. But the more I sat in that line, the more worried I am about it. Uh, worried sick that this engine may not be long for this world. I got gas. I got a lot of Google. I called Hoovy. I asked a bunch of questions. Chad said that it's just low battery, but the, you know the car tells you the battery percentage. It's 97%. Hoovy said, there's a chance it's the cam phasers. We're gonna send it. That's where we're at. I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, let's point this thing back towards Kansas and find out together <laughs> if, if my life is destroyed or not. That's, that's where we're going. That's, that's the definition of a nervous laugh. All right, I'm hopping on the 91 here in a minute. It's clean right now. Like most of the time this thing's perfect. But those couple little flashes of the check engine light sure had me worried. Let's see what happens. We've got McLaren problems. Listen to all that air rushing around the top of the windshield. You can also see a little gap around the center console trim where they tried to work on it. But I gotta say, this car is incredible to drive. It's in sport. I'm not using cruise or anything. The pedal feel is perfect even in sport. My foot's just resting on the gas and it holds the speed limit. It's not twitchy. Uh, sometimes they just way overhype the pedal and they probably do in track mode, but it's in sport. And uh, we're, I mean, we're just cruising down this big highway going 70 mile an hour. What a good car. It is nice to drive. And of course, a couple downshifts and this thing gets rowdy. Uh, I haven't gotten rowdy. I just know that it does because I hear the pop pops of the exhaust when I'm just cruising around. Now we're in proper California. I must have lucked out before. Well, there's no Del Taco in Kansas, so I made a Del Taco stop. Listen to the tires on this thing. They are scrubbing because of the way they cut the road. It is the eeriest sound. It sounds like winds like howling through a, an open window at night, you know, but continuously. Anyway, other than the tires scrubbing like crazy right now, uh, I haven't seen the check engine light since we left. So I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed. We're gonna keep driving this car. <laughs> and if we make it home, what a car. It is incredible to drive. It's just idling along. Barely 2000 RPM at 73 miles an hour right now. I mean, 2100 RPM, that's where we're at right now. So it is just idling down the highway. Uh, unbelievable. Three flash, the infotainment rocks, the audio sounds incredible, the AC works fine if you want it. This is a lot of car for $76,000. A lot, it may be the most car you could possibly ever have for $76,000. Anyway, I'll update you guys on how true that is as we get closer to the finish line. I should also mention if you take the suspension out of active and try to drive it in like complete comfort mode like I'd like to. It is horrible. This car rolls around like a pig wallowing in mud. But as soon as you put it in sport, everything's okay. So it's been perfect since then. I'm gonna keep it in sport. But we're gonna run out of daylight pretty soon. So these are some of the last views of the beautiful hills of California. And uh, this one lane that's just absolutely perfect to, to maintain this speed in for three or four more hours. Look at that, a Veloster in. If you buy one of those, the state can take it off the road and you'll never get to drive it again. We did just make it across the border into some other country, so. Wow. Oh man. Can you believe that's not Photoshop? <laughs> that was not even full throttle. That, that was three quarter. This car is legitimately insane. That is absolute artwork. Before me, this car was getting 12.5 miles per gallon. And then with me in it, it gets 23.3 miles per gallon. I am 
almost completely asleep at this point. I've been up since, what, 3 a.m. in Pacific time, and it's currently, I know it's only 5.41, but it's been a whole day of travel and driving, and that really does beat you down. So we're filling this thing back up. We've got about one hour to go to get to Phoenix, and from there I can catch up on my sleep, and you guys can see this car. Another complaint I've got is the cruise control is absolutely horrible. You can use the stock for a decel, but if you try to use Excel, nothing happens. It actually cancels the cruise. Uh, I think that switch is bad, but every other switch on this thing seems to be perfect. So, I mean, I'm really not having a lot of issues on this drive. It is rocking and rolling. So we've got our water stash under there. There's a secret 12 volt plug for your radar detector, which is awesome. It works perfectly. And uh, then there's 12 volts and an aux in the console and it jumped right onto the iPhone. So that is awesome. I've got all my music there. Well, when all is said and done, the car made it to Phoenix. So uh, I think we're doing pretty well so far. I can't say too many bad things about it. Obviously it's got a weird issue. For some reason we're seeing that random multiple cylinder misfire and also misfires on six and seven. But honestly, I haven't seen it again since I was sitting in line to get the car out of Mannheim. And then again, when I was turning right, leaving Mannheim, it's been solid other than that. I've also been careful not to let it like sit at idle just to make sure that we don't have any issues. I gotta make it home and then we'll figure out if it needs more from there. So the cheapest, what I thought was a perfect McLaren in the country, but it turns out it's the cheapest broke in the parking lot McLaren uh, in the country. Yet still an insane deal, unbelievably fast, crazy value for your money, less than a new F-150 Lariat with a few options. Uh, it's just crazy. You guys gotta see this, I gotta go to bed. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjro.com for cool shirts, not like this, actually like the one underneath. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do, and I will talk to you next time. But for real, buy the merch. I gotta, I'll gotta. i probably have to buy McLaren parts. And tomorrow, we see if it'll make it another thousand miles.